don't want to get up this morning. I am going to get up though. I'm preloaded for... Where am I? <laughs> I'm going to get up and sort myself out. The first thing I do is make a cup of tea because in my opinion, you cannot start the day without one. That's better. I'm up ready and I have made my cup of tea. I'm preloaded for near Welshpool. I loaded in Exeter last night. I left there around seven o'clock and I've made my way up to Gloucester. That is as far as I could get last night. The first thing I do when I set my car to work is do my daily checks. And it also gives me the chance to look at my pretty lorry. I really struggled to get parked last night. I went to a few different places, couldn't get in, went to an industrial estate that normally you can park in. All the parking was full up, so I've ended up on well, they are faded, but double yellow lines. And I'd been illegal to carry on and I'm illegal to stay here. So I had no choice but to hope that no one came around and find me. But that's trucking. There's not enough parking in this country for truck drivers. And I'm not the only one, a mate of mine struggled for parking too. Things like this is exactly why there's a shortage of truck drivers. Not sure what I've got next. It's probably going to be a, a load of grain back towards Exeter. I'm on the blower again this week. I've got a different trailer than I've had before. Some bits are slightly different, but it all has the same principle. Glasses on. It rained quite heavily overnight last night, so I just lift the body up to get the water off the sheet. The weight of the water can sometimes bend the middle bar on the sheet if you go over rough ground, which makes the sheet difficult to take on and off. Then I am ready to go, so I quietly leave the industrial estate, past my mate Gary Pratt, who is still sleeping. I head out of the industrial estate and back to the M5. I generally try to park up with as little fuel as possible for obvious reasons, so my first stop is at Strencham Services to get some diesel. Luckily, there's not too many trucks waiting for diesel this morning. I'm also feeling like I need a little pick-me-up, so I buy myself a coffee. Then it's back to the truck and back out onto the M5 northbound. And of course I hit traffic on the usual spot as the M5 meets the M6. I'm not on the M6 for long and I pick up the very wet M54. But luckily as I head around Shrewsbury and out towards Welshpool, the rain clears away. It gets a bit slow around some roadworks and then I navigate myself through the windy town of Welshpool. Welshpool has a large livestock market so who knows, I might see Becky Giles. Once I'm through Welshpool, I follow the directions that the farmer has given me through the lanes. And it seems quite a long way from the main roads. Eventually, I get there and I pull in up to the gates. As I pull in, the chat rings me from the company I'm subbied out to this week. Hello? Alright, yeah, not too bad. Yeah. Um, I got to Gloucester, so I've just literally just pulled up at the farm now. Right. Yeah, alright then. Alright, cheers. Cheers, bye. Then I get out and open the gate, and the farmer says that I can leave the gate open as he needs to be in and out while I'm tipping. He also said there's only one bin, and that looks like it right in front of me there. It's quite a steep, gravelly slope, so I'm going to back up to the side of it rather than back down the hill and risk not being able to back up to it because I'm spinning. And I'm also on a flat surface here too. Then it's out to set up the blower ready for tipping. I get all of my adapters out and put them on in the appropriate places. Luckily here I'm only going to need the one pipe which is great. As I've said in previous videos, the further you blow it the longer it will take. How long it takes can also depend on the bin but this looks like quite a new modern bin so I'm hoping it's going to be a good one. I'm just going to move back a bit so that the pipe and the trailer match up. And it matches up perfectly, which is great. This trailer only has one door, which is here. So there's a smaller compartment at the front and a bigger one at the back. So I'm just going to open the door. To be fair, I might have to do this two-handed because I think there's quite a lot of weight in there. Yeah. <laughs> 
The doors can be very hard to open sometimes with the weight on them from certain products. As I've said in previous videos, the blower trailers have their own separate engine. So with its own separate engine, I also need to check the oil on it, which is under here. So before I start it up, I'm just gonna check the oil quickly. And it's just here, here we go. Here is the dipstick, which is ever so long. And it has got oil in it. I'm just going to give it a quick, where have I put my tissue? Quick wipe with the old tissue. Then I'm going to feed it right back in and pull it out again. Okay, right in. And then pull it out again and then I'll get a true reading of if there's any oil. I don't know if you can see but there is there is oil in there. So we are ready to go. We can start the engine up. So this trailer is slightly different to the other one I've used. This is much more modern. So what I need to do is flick the switch on wait for it to um, load up. Then it's got a rabbit and a hare. No, rabbit and a hare. Tortoise and a hare. It's on tortoise. And I'm just gonna press the enter key. It's kind of talking me through it anyway. So it's telling me to press the green one to start and that will start it up slowly on the warm up. Once it's warmed up, I press enter again and that will take the revs up to a pre-setting of what the revs should be at. So this is far more sophisticated than the other trailer. I don't have to guess the revs or listen to the engine. It just does it all for me. And we're now revved up, ready to start blowing. So I closed the air valve, start the feeder and increase the air. Because this is mill and very powdery, I am going to have to use the auger. And I keep adjusting the air until I think it sounds right. And on this bin, I can see the feed going into the bin. So then I raise the body slightly, but not too far because of the type of product that I'm blowing. I can carry around 26 tonnes of product on this trailer. And that is two tonnes less than my normal bulker because of the weight of the engine. I don't really like leaving it going, um, but I need to sort out my details for the next farm that I'm picking up from. And it looks like I'm picking up from a farm and delivering to a farm, 20, 25 tonnes of wheat. I'm just going to fill out my tickets and then I'll go back out. It's getting a bit hot now as well. Well, I've looked up both farms now. The farm that I'm picking up from, I've looked up and I don't know how to get there without going through weight limits because every single way that you go goes for a weight limit. I'm going to have to ring the farmer to give him an ETA anyway. So I will ask him then which is the best way to go in without upsetting people. As for the other farm that I'm delivering to, looks quite simple. But then I could be wrong. It could be the other way around. Help to check on the load and I remember my air defender. This product will take about an hour and a half to two hours to blow. I will slowly increase the height of the trailer just so that it gently slides into the feeder. And this will hopefully, fingers crossed, prevent it from blocking up. To be honest, this product doesn't seem too sticky, so we should hopefully be okay. The worst types of mill to blow are the ones with a lot of rape mill in it. Once the trailer is finally empty, I turn everything into the off position. And on this blower, I need to press stop on the engine to cool the engine down before completely turning it off. Then I need to disconnect everything and pack away all my attachments and my pipe. I make sure that I don't forget anything as I am going to need these later on. And I don't want to have to be driving back up here later to come and get them. I'm so glad that it's better weather than the last time I was on the blower when I got absolutely soaked through. And then covered in feed which stuck to my wet clothes. Once the body is all the way down, I give it a shunt forward to make sure that the door is in the right position so that I can close it. Then it's gloves away and shunt around to manoeuvre back down the lane. I'm wearing one of Ollie Bloggs' t-shirts that he gave me for free and they go really well with my Hexby shorts that I got sent for free last summer. Most of the stuff I wear I get for free which is great because I don't ever have time to go shopping. I wave goodbye to the cows that are in the field. 
and when I get to the bottom of the lane, I close the gate behind me as the farmer has finished going in and out with the tractor and trailer. While I'm here, I ring the farmer that I'm collecting from next to give him an ETA. Hello. Hello, it's Gemma from Wayne's Transport. Which is the best way for me to come from the 42 because every place I look, it's a weight limit. Right, okay, the best? Yeah. And then that's... That's our track up to our buildings, and you have to go under a 12 6 railway bridge between the buildings and, us, and that uh, bridge. Ah, uh, right, yeah. And uh, just come all the way up to the top, and you'll see the sheds. Oh, Can't perfect. miss it. Goodbye. Once I've got some good directions from the farmer, I can make my way to his farm. And it's back down the windy country lanes, back to the main road. The farm is not too far away from Nuneaton, and it's going to take me about two and a half hours to get there. When I looked at Google Maps, the M6 had a lot of traffic on it, so I may use the M6 toll instead. As I head back down through Welshpool, I see the steam train in the station before winding back down through the narrow streets of the town itself. But it's not long before I'm back on the main roads and heading towards Shrewsbury. Welshpool cattle market there. Wonder if Becky Jones is in there. I take the A5 around Shrewsbury towards the M54, and it seems to still be raining at the same spot on the M54. The traffic on the M6 is still looking pretty busy, so I decide to take the M6 toll. I've never actually used the M6 toll before, so this is a new experience for me. The toll in an Arctic is £13.50, which I'll claim back off the company later. I head down the M42 a short way before coming off and following the farmer's directions to the farm. This isn't an area that I know too well in depth, but the country lanes don't actually look too bad until I turn into the actual farm lane and the trees are pretty low and all I can hear is the branches banging on my roof. Then it's up over a narrow humpback bridge over a canal before coming across the low bridge that the farmer told me about. As I'm driving up to it, I'm thinking that really is low and I'm not so confident I'm gonna get under it. So I do the sensible thing and get out and have a little look as the last thing I want to do is hit a railway bridge. I have a look from the front and also on the gantry on the back and my thoughts are that it's going to be tight but I reckon I will get through. I take it ever so slowly just to nose myself underneath and I'm ready to stop if I hear a loud bang. I've also put the air right down just to give me those extra couple of inches. Once the cab's under I get out and have another little look just to make absolutely sure I'm not going to hit it if I go any further. It does look super close from where I'm standing, so I decide to get up on the gantry to see what it looks like from up there. At this point, I'm just really glad that I've got the low cab version of the S series. I definitely wouldn't have wanted to have backed it up that lane with all the low hanging trees there. I'm sure some people who have collected grain here in the past have had to back up this lane before because they wouldn't have got under the bridge. This is a private lane into the farm and it is the only way in and out. The farmer is in the yard when I get there and he signals to me where he wants me to park. And luckily his yard is not as tight as the bridge coming in. In fact, there is plenty of room to manoeuvre. This trailer has a manual sheet, so once I'm parked up, I need to get out and take it off myself. I undo all the ratchets and then I try to roll the sheet over, but unfortunately it doesn't roll all the way as one of the straps across is missing and it keeps getting caught at the end. So my only option is to climb across the sheet and unhook it. And then I can roll it right the way over. I can then give the thumbs up to the farmer to start loading. And by the time he starts, I'll be down the ladder and would have secured the strap that I used to pull it back over once he's loaded. This is 25 tonnes of normal wheat that's going to be blown into a bin on a farm. Here you can see one strap and then the other side the strap is missing. There is one on order but for now it's just something I've got to overcome. It doesn't take too long to get loaded and I'm here for about 20 minutes all in all. 
Once I'm tipped, I can pull the sheet back over using the strap that I attached to the middle of the sheet. I pull it over as quickly as I can so that hopefully the straps either end will flick back down as I pull the sheet over. And luckily, both straps came down, which made my life a lot easier. I removed the strap that I pulled the sheet over with and put it away. Then I used the three ratchet straps down the side of the trailer to pull the sheet really tight. And I tucked the tails of the straps under the ratchets. The farmer gives me the grain passport like I would get with any other British grain grain. The grain that I've picked up today is new crop that has been harvested this year. Once again, when I pull up to the bridge, I get out and have a little look just to make sure I'm central as I knew how tight it was going through it in the first place. I'm happy with my positioning, so I just pull forwards through the tunnel very slowly, hoping that I don't scuff the wing kit at the top. And we're through, thank goodness. Then it's back over the humpback bridge and down through the low hanging trees. And I take the same route out through the lanes as I went in. The farm that I'm taking the grain to is just a little bit north of Telford. So I'm going back in the same direction as I came from Welshpool, but I'm not going as far. On the M42, I spot an Adams truck with a truck junkie flap. On the way back, I decided to take the M6 as according to Google Maps, it said that the traffic had cleared and there was only about five minutes in it. But on this occasion, I think Google Maps was lying to me. I spot one of West Country Bulk's lorries where the M5 merges onto the M6 and it's a Comedy Heroes one. So I get a good look at it as I'm driving past. Then as I slow down to get onto the M54, I get a good look from the other side as well. And I get a little bit of air horns. I'm not quite going to make it to the farm in four and a half hours driving, so I stop for a break in Telford Services. This services doesn't have a lot of lorry parking, and unfortunately there are no bays to back into on my good side. So I need to back up to one on my blind side which is not the best type of reverse anyway, and it's uphill and I'm fully loaded. I have a little check on my positioning, and luckily a nice chap comes and watches me back in that makes it a lot easier for me, as on a blindside reverse there is a lot that you cannot see, and I really don't want to hit another truck. Thank you! It also doesn't help when you've got an audience of truck drivers around you either, and sometimes I think people watch just out of the curiosity to see how you do it as much as if you can do it. I put myself on break and I get my stuff ready for a shower. And luckily in this services there is a women's shower and to be fair it's pretty decent as truck showers go. Then it's back to the truck and before I leave I need to ring the farmer. Hello. Hello it's Gemma from Wayne's Transport. I'm delivering a load of feed uh, wheat to you. It's the middle bin on the left of the three. Right. But just have a look, just have a look at the grain and yeah, yeah. you'll be able to tell. Ideal, thank you very much. Alright, cheers. Alright, cheers, bye. I'm only around 20 minutes away from the farm, so it won't take me long to get there at all. And it looks and sounds like a pretty simple place to get to, with no low trees, low bridges or narrow lanes. I only have to get on the M54 for a short distance before getting off and heading north through Telford, before pulling into the farm gates nice and easy. Right, I'm going to just check which bin the wheat is in. Middle bin. So I pull forwards and then back up to the middle bin. Right, let's go and get this set up as quick as I possibly can because I got to go and pick up a load of barley. Ooh, So I'm basically just going to set up the same as before. Oh, I do need to move back a bit. I need to just move the truck back a little bit. But what's different about this one is that I'm going to have to blow out of the other side. So all I'm going to do over here, there's two levers. So I'm just going to
then I can get myself all set up with my pipes and all my attachments and I can also open the internal door on the trailer. This is the exact same setup as before, just on the other side of the trailer. And now that I've changed over those valves, everything else will be exactly the same as I've blown before. They also look like nice new modern bins that I'm blowing into. And once I move the truck back slightly, I will also only need one pipe. And without being too close to the bin, that when I tip the trailer up, the back of the trailer won't hit the bin. I start everything up as before, and once the revs are up, I can start tipping. Wheat is so much easier to blow than milled feed, and will also blow a lot quicker and normally with a lot less problems. I will also lift my trailer a bit higher than I would with milled feed, as it's not likely to clump up around the feeder. Once it's going, I can plan where I'm going next. And with that, I get my daily Hello. call from my Ryan. Hello, alright. Not too bad. I am in the middle of blowing. Um, I'm going to have to on a farm near Telford. While I'm on the phone to him, I fill out my paperwork for my next load and make sure that my paperwork for this load is in order for getting back out and checking on the load. Wheat will only take about an hour and a quarter to an hour and a half to blow and I will only need to use the auger right at the end to get the last couple hundred kilos out. Then once it's all off, I put everything back to the off position and cool the engine down before turning it off. Then I pack everything away, making sure that I don't forget anything. And even though I'm going to collect a load of barley to bring back to this same farm, I take everything with me as truck driving is one of those jobs that you just cannot predict what will happen next. If you're somebody that likes predictability, this job is not for you as situations can change very quickly and you must overcome them and adapt. As I put the body down, it doesn't go down very quickly. So the first thing I check is a coupling on the hydraulic pipe and it had become loose. So as soon as I tightened it up, it came down a lot quicker. Then I can close my internal door and put everything away securely. That's that done. Oh, I sound funny. Um, so I'm off to farm down the road and I've actually tipped a hell of a lot quicker than I thought I was going to be able to. Obviously this bin is very good. Yeah, I'm going there. So I'm going to turn myself around. All right, I'm only around half an hour away. And I did say to the farmer I would give him a ring when I'm leaving because I've already rung him to check for direction. I make turning around as easy as possible for myself by driving up between the sheds and then back him round on my good side. Hello piggies. Hello, you looking at me? Rather than pulling forwards and then trying to back round on my blind side between the sheds. I don't know if it's just me, but there is something beautiful about watching a trailer back round a corner. Before I leave, I just give the farmer a quick ring. Hello. Hello, it's Gemma from Wayne's again. All right? Yeah. I've tipped yeah. quicker than I thought, so I should be over probably just before seven, hopefully, if that's all right. Wonderful. All right. Yeah, that's grand. All right. Yeah, okay, see, see you then. Bit. Cheers, yeah. bye. Bye. The farmer was really keen to load tonight rather than in the morning and is only around 40 minutes away. The farm is a bit of a way through the lanes, but at this time in the evening, you've got less chance of meeting someone. Once I get there, the farmer asks me to weigh in, and then I back off the weigh bridge and pull up to the edge of the concrete in front of the shed door. A lot of farmers like to load on flat concreted surfaces if they can, as this is a lot steadier for the handler, and it also helps to prevent spillages as well. It's about seven o'clock now, and it's starting to get a bit chillier. Very untidy. I'm gonna have to put my jumper back on because I am quite chilly. WR truck sales. Oh. See, it's hot in here, but it's cold out there. Going to check my weight. The bucket only holds about a ton, so we are going to be here a little while. Should have had my tea while I was here. So I'm gonna, just going to give it a shunt back into the forward. Back 
Sometimes when backing around a corner, you can't see where you need to aim your trailer. So right now I'm just giving it an educated guess as to where the Weybridge is. But will I get it right or not? And it looks like I've actually done pretty well on this occasion. And it's straight back onto the Weybridge to weigh this barley out. This barley that I'm picking up here is also this year's crop. Looking at the time, I'm hoping that I will get back to the farm. The farmer needs to close the gates behind me, so I pull out into the farm entrance so that I can put my sheet on. The farmer is closing up his shed with the barley in, so I close the gates for him to save him walking all the way over. Just pulled out to put the sheet on. As before, I'm going to pull the sheet over as quickly as I possibly can to try and get the straps at either end flicked over. But on this occasion, they both got stuck. I take the strap off for pulling the sheet over and put it away. I can't believe that. <laughs> both of them's been stuck. Earlier on, they came over lovely, but I don't think you could see it from the angle of the video. But look, that one's, that one's stuck as well. I pull the middle strap down and do it up as tight as I possibly can. And this is basically like doing up any other strap. Then I climb up the gantry and get the strap closest to me down. And I also get the broom to get the other strap. Once again, I'm pulling the straps down as tight as I possibly can before ratcheting them on. And I do exactly the same with the front. And I make sure that the tail of the strap is tucked in neatly afterwards. I put the brush away on the gantry and then we are ready to go. Right, that's that done. Drive safely. Well, I've rung the farmer and I can stay on the farm tonight, thank goodness. So I'm heading back to the farm that I've tipped at just now. Let's go. And I'm heading back down the lanes back the way I came. And once again, luckily, the lanes seem really quiet. At the roundabout, I need to go through the road close signs as I need to take the turn in just before the road is closed. And as I turn off, I'm not sure if you can see, but the road is closed just down there. At one point, I thought I was going to have enough time to get back to the farm and tip, but now I don't think I will, as it took longer than I thought to load. But that isn't going to be a problem for me tonight, as I haven't had any work sent through for tomorrow yet. So it's quarter to nine now and I have until nine o'clock. So I'm just gonna park up tonight and tip this in the morning. Even if I did have time to tip this tonight, I haven't been given any details for tomorrow. I'm not working for Wayne's Transport directly. I'm subbied out to another company, so Wayne's Transport don't know what I'm doing. I just basically go to this company and they give me work. So I've let them know that I will probably either tip it tonight or first thing in the morning. So I'm hoping that by the time I've tipped this, that somebody will get back to me. I've done a 15 hour day, so I can have nine hours off. So basically I can start at quarter to six if I needed to, but I don't know what time somebody's gonna be in to let me know what to do. Cause I'm sure people don't get in the, into the office until around half past seven. So I don't know whether to start about half past six and then by the time someone gets in and sorts a job out, it's going to be like half past eight. I don't know. Look at little bunny. I reckon that is time for some tea. I have been waiting for this for quite some time now. Have a mushroom bolognese with an Italian word I can't say. I 
think it's like tortellini. How am I supposed to say anything Italian with my accent? Doesn't look too bad, does it? Quite nice. It's dark outside, it's pouring down with rain, the night's drawing in, so I think that is bedtime. <laughs>